I don't care about pretty much anything else. I just want my daughter to live, and I would want to hug her, and I'd want to touch her, and I'd hug her, and I'd say, oh, baby girl, please, please hug me back. I would whisper in her ear, God's healing you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, and your daddy loves you. Reagan and her friend would spend their life on the jet ski if we'd let them. So when I was letting them down on the uh, on the pier, I told them, I said, gang, there's gonna be more boats out here than there is at any time of the year, so y'all be careful. And they were, as I'm letting them down, they're, you know, dad, hush to me, just let us go. And so I stopped the lift and I said, now look at me, both of you two, I want y'all to be very careful. And they said, we will, and then they, took off. It was an extremely busy day. And, you know, our dad sent her off, you know, be careful, have a good time. And within just maybe five minutes, we got a phone call from um, her friend who was on the back of the jet ski that Reagan, um, they'd been hit. And I, I was not ready to see what I saw, which was her back was arching up and she was just doing these spasmatic movements and then blood was coming out of her nose and her ears and her eyes were rolling back in her head. And you have to remember, I mean, we were just going out for a day on the lake. I hit my knees at her feet And I told her that if she needed to go to heaven, it was gonna be okay, that her mom and dad would be okay. That's how bad this scene was. My wife told her, she said, honey, if you need to run to Jesus, run to Jesus. And I said, no, we're not running to Jesus. No, 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 no. They stabilized Reagan and then med flighted her to Huntsville Hospital. The trauma surgeon comes in to tell us that he just, there's, there's really not anything that he can do for her. Her brain injury was of the severest. Um, it was called a diffuse axonal injury, and that just means the whole brain is involved. Gray matter and white matter and the capillaries they, they formed together and it's all of them were sheared. So rather than a focal injury, like a one part of your brain that controls your hand or whatever, it was her entire brain where it was sheared. And they said she needs a pediatric neurosurgeon and we don't have one of those here. So we need to send her to Children's Hospital in Birmingham. So life flighted her again. When we got to the hospital, um, the first person to meet us at the door was the chaplain. This is bad. If you go to a hospital in an emergency situation, they want you to see the priest. That's not good. I just wanted to see my daughter. That's all I really cared about. And I was like, that's fine. Where's Reagan? We want to see her. Is she going to live? And he said... I, I can't tell you that. Oh, we got into the ICU and there was a nurse there that was already, you know, they were putting tubes in her and she hadn't already been intubated so that it could breathe for her. And it was absolutely horrible. It was a closed head injury, which means there's nothing a surgeon can do. It was just prayer. And as we're just sitting there trying to process that first day, it just, it was a Holy Spirit. I said, every single person that comes into this room, you go to Reagan and you repeat the verse, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You tell her, and we did it over and over and over. Everyone just in her ear, Reagan, you can do this. 
so she was in ICU for three weeks. Then finally they said, you know, we think that she's ready to go to a step down unit, which was a huge thing. And so every little, every little victory, because to us, any kind of response was a victory. I mean, if we would touch her and her arm would move a little bit, we'd high five each other. And, and one of the things that they would do is they would come in with a flashlight. And they would open her eyes and they'd shine a flashlight in it. And obviously your pupils are supposed to dilate. Hers didn't. They just stayed that way. And then they'd try to move and you know, you're because you want them to track and they wouldn't. I mean, she would just, and, she, and her eyes stayed closed. And then finally one day after she got in the step down unit, her eyes opened. And that was such a big deal. And so that was another victory. And we just told the docs, we're just gonna keep on doing this. So it was just, it was just a very long road. And one of the things that they told us was this is a marathon, you know, not a race. And that is very true. We're still in the marathon. We're, you know, she's hit her strides. But we have, you know, she has more. She has goals. She has, um, she has things she wants to do in this life, you know. Then when she was discharged, and we brought her home, and and and, and Catherine and and her were just like I've told them. They're like Thelma and Louise because they were just they were joined at the hip for years, going off to therapies or, you know doing different doing different trials we tried every kind of you know different therapies alternative medicines it didn't matter I mean stem cell therapy you know uh, I remember the first time she laughed you know we were brushing her teeth and we made her mad I don't I don't know what we did but it, both sisters were there with her and um, we just laughed until we cried because it that was the first Reagan moment, you know, where it was it was Reagan. It was holy. I mean, it was totally holy. It was a holy moment. It was all those things, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I mean, just constantly. I remember once even I said it, I was telling her that, and she finished the verse with me. But maybe it's 4.13, I knew all things. Through Christ, who streamed into me. I want people not to give up. My doctors were not expecting me to live, to make it through the night. But I did. But I'm here. I'm right here. I'm not leaving any time soon. Christ promised that we would have trouble in this world, right? So don't be surprised when we have trouble in this world. And even even when I know that, when I have trouble, I'm still surprised. So it's so it's still it's a, it's a lot easier to preach that and say, hey, this is what you need to do until it happens to you, and then it's. I mean, so it's, I get it. You just can't quit. It's okay to whine and cry and bicker and crawl and spit and all that. It's okay to even want to quit. Really, it's okay to say, I want to quit. That's fine. Just don't. Was it an accident? Absolutely. But I want it to mean something. And I think our whole family wants to do that. And in our own way, our own individual way, because we all commit this very differently. She's our inspiration, and she is, she's a walking illustration of the power of Christ. Inspire people not to give up. Don't look at what could happen. Look at where you're going, where you're headed, the good thing. Never look at the wrong or the bad, but look at the possibilities.
Ginagdi 